All right, go ahead and be opening up to Luke chapter 9. So uh, I want to cl uh, clear up some things and add a little more detail to uh, what, what I was teaching before the conference and a little bit during the conference. But let's kind of pick up our train of thought about authority and power, okay? So to put you back in remembrance, uh, we're not just a little quick review. By the way, just in case any of you don't know it, Lynn Perez is in the house. Lynn Perez is in the house. If you don't get your Lynn Perez hug, shame on you, okay? Hallelujah. All right. So, you're welcome, dear. I'm in trouble now, but that's okay. <laughs> yes, you are. Did you hear that? We love Lynn. If you can't love Lynn, you need to get saved. I'm just telling you right now, you know, that's for sure. But anyway, prior to the conference, we were talking about authority and power. And how there's two different Greek words. Authority is usually the Greek word, usually, the Greek word exousia. And it, a Vine's translation is the one I like the best. Exousia is the right to exercise power. It's not the power itself. But if you've been granted exousia, you have been granted authority to exercise power. Dunamis, on the other hand, is raw power. It is where we get our word dynamite. And uh, Jesus said, we're going to look at this verse later, but he told the, the uh, disciples, he said, I want you to tarry in Jerusalem. Wait for the promise of the Father, for you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you. That is the Greek word dunamis, and it is dynamite power. So the way he's been having me teach it, See, Jesus himself said, it's not me doing the works. You remember that? It's not me. It's the Father in me. And by that he means, you know, he would pray, that my Father which art in heaven. He didn't mean the, the Father in that sense being in him. No, it's the Spirit of the Father that filled him the day he was baptized by John in the River Jordan. So I like to say it this way. It helps my brain. Jesus, during what we see in Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus is the agent of authority. Remember he said all, in the King James it says, all power has been granted unto me both in heaven and in earth. But really the Greek word there is exousia. All authority has been granted unto me both in heaven and in earth. Okay? But, right, but the Holy Spirit, see, he is the agent of power. Jesus himself never cast out one devil. He never opened a blind eye. He never healed one person until he himself was baptized with the Holy Spirit the day he was baptized by John in the River Jordan. That from that day forward, he was co-laboring with the Holy Spirit. Now, there's really, really an important lesson right there. Was the Holy Spirit here before that day? Is not the Holy Spirit omnipresent? Absolutely. So the Holy Spirit was there with all those sick people who got healed later. The Holy Spirit was there. The power to heal was there. Yet the Holy Spirit wasn't doing anything to heal them. It's exactly the same picture that I have in my mind back in Genesis. Where the earth was dark and void and without form. Yet it says the Holy Spirit was there. He was hovering over the deep. But see, he wasn't doing anything. Even though he's all-knowing. He's, all, he's all-knowing like God the Father. So the instant God the Father wanted light, the Holy Spirit knew that the Father wanted light, and he had the power to produce light, but he wasn't doing anything. Why? The Holy Spirit co-labors with the spoken word of God. He, he co-labors with the agent of authority. In that case, it was the word. All things were created by him. Without him was not anything made that was made. Well, in the beginning was the what? The word. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So those two things always go together. You've got the agent of authority, and you've got the agent of power. Okay, are we on board? All right. So when I was teaching on this before, you've got to remember, you can only teach so much in one hour. <laughs> That's why it's important to listen to all of the Born Again Trail. Don't just pick out one. Right. Now, it'll be good what's on there, yeah. but... Your mind will dissect certain, it might make assumptions about what Dave is saying that are not really what Dave is saying. You got to hear all 60 of them. Say 60. <laughs> More than once. <laughs> okay. 
And so same thing here. I've you know been doing, but I appreciate good questions and from well-meaning people. I don't appreciate one-upmanship questions, to be honest with you. No amens, no nothing. Y'all don't ever get those. You know what I'm talking about. I, I, I appreciate well-intended from honest hearts. Iron sharpens iron. Some of my best times, man, we'll get around the table, you know, Alan and me and whoever, you know, maybe a couple of guys, and man, we're slurping coffee and pounding the table and talking about God and got good questions, you know, iron sharpens iron. That's good. I get letters from good friends, and it's good questions. And it, part of it helps me identify, okay, I wasn't clear on this, and I wasn't clear on that. So what today is doing, we're going to bring a little more clarity. Clear? It's going to be clarity that is clear. <laughs> that is clarity. <laughs> hey, Dave makes up words all the time. I can make up words. Hallelujah. <laughs> Isn't that right, Dave? We have, we've been commissioned to make up our own words. Hallelujah. <laughs> all right. So with that, it, because I think I gave the impression that when Jesus commissioned the 12 and when he commissioned the 70, that they had that anointing constantly from that point on. That is not precisely true. In fact, there's a big difference between how the 12 operated, how the 70 operated, and how you function. And a big part of that is why Jesus said it's expedient. We're going to get to that verse too. It's better for you, better for you, that he goes away. Because if he doesn't go away, the Holy Spirit will not come on you. And by what he means by that, in the same way that he came on him. Yeah, you'll get that in a minute. So anyway, let's look at, <laughs> let's go to Luke chapter 9. With that, that's my introduction. Nine minutes, that's pretty good. Okay, we've still got almost, you know, got 50 minutes left. And we'll just start in verse 1. This is where he commissioned the 12. So then he called his 12 disciples to, oh, yes. Now, and a reason, part of the reason Jesus did this, where we have it recorded for all eternity, he wanted us to know. Remember, during this time, from the time of John the baptism until he was crucified, he says, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, since when, what time? Since Jesus was baptized by John in the River Jordan. From that time until he was resurrected, he is preaching the kingdom of God. Even though, and the kingdom of God was being manifested because he had been anointed already as the last Adam. But the kingdom of God, the people themselves could not be born again. He was the only person that had that life on the inside of him until after the resurrection. Only then did the new birth become available. Okay, But during this unique time period between the baptism of John and the, the death, burial, and resurrection, he is preaching the kingdom of God while officially the law is still in full force. It's a very interesting period of time. Okay, there are manifestations of the kingdom because of who he is. And he has authority to grant authority under him to anybody that he chooses. But it does not mean that they are born again yet. They're not born again. They're not filled with the Holy Ghost. I mean, Peter, who would cowardly, I mean, we love Peter, but he, he, he denied Jesus three times, once with an oath. I don't know him, doggone it. Okay, is that okay? But he didn't use doggone, okay? I mean, with an oath. And, and yet that same Peter, you, you read his epistles, and you go, can this be the same man? This same man, he that suffered in the flesh is free from sin and, and you know, endure persecution and be a martyr if God calls you to be that. And then one, well, what's the difference? The Peter before the resurrection loved Jesus, but he wasn't born again. He wasn't filled with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost would come upon him to do miracles. But he wasn't the same man. By the way, since you got born again, you're not the same person either. See? All right. Yes. Luke, Luke chapter 9. <laughs> then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them. Now, this, this is a type and a shadow of what's coming to us. He did this on purpose during that time period to show that he doesn't withhold all the authority just to him. No, he delegates authority. He delegates authority, even to people who aren't born again. Okay, now watch this. So then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power, that's dunamis, and authority, that's exousia. He gave them both. How could he give them both? 
Dave said it like this, and I can't improve on it. Dave, Dave says it this way. Jesus basically placed his mantle temporarily on the twelve. They're going to go for, it's like he's talking to, it's like he's talking to the Holy Spirit. He says, look, I am sending these twelve out in my name. They are going to represent me and the kingdom. Holy Spirit, you go be with them the same way that you are with me. I am placing my mantle, but it was a temporary placing, okay? They're not born again. They're not filled with the Holy Ghost. But Jesus is basically, basically placing his mantle on them. So he sends them out. But this is a type and a shadow of what's coming to us later in the new covenant. Okay? This makes us know he can do this. All right. He gave them power and authority over a few devils. Oh, over all devils and to cure the common cold. Oh, diseases, z -z 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 -z, plural, diseases, z -z -z, plural. I like that. Not just one, not a little thing. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to pray for the sick. Oh, we're starting to understand. No, he sent them to heal the sick. And he's sending you to heal the sick. And he's sending me to heal the sick. See, we've got to get a, a different mindset. At this point, we've had to work up courage to go pray for the sick. But he's trying to change that mindset. Now, I'm not going to go pray for nothing. <laughs> I ain't going to pray and leave them like they are. I'm going to go heal the sick. That's what he said to them. Look at it. <laughs> We're going to look at it again in a minute. And to cure. And he sent them to, he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, Take nothing for your journey, neither staves nor scrip, neither bread nor money, neither have two coats apiece, whatever house you enter, therein abide, and thence depart, and whosoever will not receive you when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And I like how, I believe, I believe it was Bronk during the conference, said, We don't have the right, the church at large today has no right to shake the dust off our feet for anybody. Because all we've done is given them a word gospel. We didn't heal the sick. Didn't cast out devils. Didn't raise the dead. We have no right. Until we do what Jesus said, they have not even really heard the gospel yet. For the vast majority of planet Earth, they've never seen nor heard this gospel of the kingdom. Okay. Now look at verse 6. And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Everywhere. Got this? I mentioned this during the conference just real quickly. I want, this is to help you get over yourself. One of the twelve. Is one of the twelve besides Peter very famous? His name is Judas. And he went everywhere, healing the sick. Do you think Jesus knew he was a thief? Do you think he might have had some purging yet to be done? Yet he went in the same anointing. That's why Peter said, why look on us as though by our own power or by our own holiness? No, it is that name and faith in that name. It's the authority I have been given in the name of Jesus. Get over yourself. You're qualified. Amen. Amen. So they went forward and did this. And they, they went and they accomplished. It says they healed the sick. Now, how permanent that was, I'm not sure. I know that Jesus was upset with them. And we could go to Matthew 17 after he was up on the Mount of Transfiguration and he come down. And there were, uh, see, Jesus, Peter, James, and John. And Wayne Horn says if he'd have been there, it would have been Wayne. Because <laughs> he said he, his love for Jesus, he said, there's no way, Jesus, you could have kept me off that mountain. Anyway, I like, we love Wayne Horn. He couldn't be here. But it blessed him to know I used his name. <laughs> Do y'all know Wayne? South Carolina? My God, Brother Gary. Anyway. That's Wayne. Love Wayne. 
He says at the Last Supper, John would have had to scooch over a little bit and draw a chalk line down the center of Jesus' chest because it would have been John and Wayne on Jesus' chest right there. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> anyway, Jesus was upset with them when he came down off the Mount of Transfiguration. They'd been trying to cast the devil out of this, it says, lunatic boy. He was, whatever it was, he was having seizures and fits and foaming at the mount. And you can tell by reading that, Jesus expected them to cast that devil out. So there was some kind of resident anointing that they had. Now, how permanent, I don't know. And I don't mean to imply at all that they were born again or that they were filled with the Holy Ghost. But they were operating under the mantle, under the authority of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he intended for them to do it. He was upset that they didn't do it. Okay. Now, let's go on to the 70. So just one chapter over. Go to Luke 10. Chapter 1. No, verse 1. Luke 10, verse 1. So after these things... The Lord appointed other 70 also. Now, other 70. So this is 70 besides the 12. So now we got 82 people. Okay, 12. Now we got 70. It's 82. And he sent them two and two before his face into every city and place whither he himself would come, would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray you therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. Go your ways. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Carry neither purse nor scrip nor shoes and salute no man by the way. And into whatsoever house you enter, first say, Peace be to this house. And if the son of peace be therefore, be therefore, your peace shall rest upon it. If not, it shall return to you again. And in the same house remain, eating and drinking such things as they give. For the laborer is worthy of his hire. Go not from house to house, and into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. Now here we go, verse 9. What's the commission to the 70? Pray for the sick. Heal, Heal the sick that are therein. And say unto them, the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. It's the same commission as the twelve. But into whatsoever city you enter, and they receive you not, go your ways out into the streets of the same, and say, Even the very dust of your city, which cleaveth on us, we do wipe off against you. Notwithstanding, be you sure that the kingdom of God is come nigh unto you. Well, how could they be sure? How could they know that the kingdom of God had come? They saw it. They didn't just hear it. Well, they, see, we're not supposed to just go tell. Did y'all ever have show and tell in school? That's the gospel. Show and tell. Show and tell. We, all we've done is tell. But we, he wants us to show and tell and so that they'll know for sure and then they make a choice. See? But now, for the most part, see, I don't have any record about these 70. We don't know that, late, that they continued in that anointing. Let's go on to where they come back, though. Uh, come on down to verse 17. Just like we saw a while ago, the 12, it says they went everywhere, healing, healing everywhere. Well, looky here, looky here. <laughs> Verse 17, and the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. You can, can you read the, ex I mean, it's like, it's almost like they're going, Lord, did you know? <laughs> <laughs> can, can you read the excitement? It's like, we're, we're so surprised, Lord. Are, did you know that when we went in your name, the devils would be subject unto what? Why else are they telling him? <laughs> and he says, oh, that's nothing. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. But behold. Now in the King James, it's a little blind to us. But behold, I give unto you power. The word power occurs twice in this verse. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall be at, by any means hurt you. But now in the Greek language, that first one, behold, I give unto you power, that is the Greek word exousia. I give unto you authority. Let's say it this way. I give unto you the right to exercise power over all the power dunamis of the enemy. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm. These were, let me read from my notes here a little. These were temporary anointings. This is basically the same way the Holy Spirit worked with all of the Old Testament saints. He would come upon them for an assignment from the Lord. Some had more of a resident anointing than others. For example, David as king said, even after he had Uriah killed, even it's in Psalms 51. In fact, the verse I'm going to read here is Psalms 51:11, And that's his repentance where he's, I've sinned against thee. He's repenting for sleeping with Bathsheba and having her husband killed. But right in that, in that psalm, right in the midst of it, he says, Take not thy Holy Spirit from me. And the king, the prophet, and the priest, the Holy Spirit would come upon them very frequently because of their assignments. But he did not normally come upon, how would Dave say it, Joe Public and Mary Wallpaper. But he would occasionally. Y'all remember Gideon? Gideon was a fraidy cat. <laughs> well, and, and he had good reason to. They had been conquered by the Midianites, if I remember correctly. And the Midianites had plundered them and taken their food. And every time they'd, the Midianites would see them harvesting, they'd just come and take the harvest, you know. So he's over hiding behind some ox wagons, if I remember right, hiding behind something, trying to thresh out a little wheat. And he's just Joe Public, Mary Wallpaper. He's not a king or a priest. And the Lord says, which is what he says to you, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon did the same thing you do. Who are you talking to? When did they come in? Where is that mighty man of valor? He must be talking about Dave, you know. As, and Gideon says, Lord, I'm the least in my family. And my family is the least in the kingdom. <laughs> Reminds me what Jesus said. He says, you know, among, uh, among prophets, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. But the least... You could be the least in your family, and your family be the least in your city, and your city be a little city, not a great city. I mean, you know, you could be the, you could be the toenail on the body of Christ. <laughs> and Jesus says the least, the least in the kingdom of God is greater than John the Baptist. Mm, we're in a better covenant, established on better promises. We've been lied to by religion, though lied to see. these were temporary anointings this is the same way the Holy Spirit worked with all the Old Testament saints he would come upon them for an assignment from the Lord some had more of a resident anointing than others the king the priest and the prophet had more manifestations of the Holy Spirit but even the common man such as Gideon on occasion he would co-labor with the Holy Spirit Pastor Dave I'm going to read it again Pastor Dave would often say Concerning like the twelve and the seventy. Jesus placed his mantle upon them in order for the Holy Spirit to co-labor with them. Did you get that? Right. But it was temporary for the most part. Now again, we're all learning. I know it wasn't totally temporary because Jesus was upset with them. When he come down off the Mount of Transfiguration and they hadn't cast that devil out of that boy, it's obvious he intended for him to do so. But anyway, you understand the point. The Holy, even then, though, the Holy Spirit would come upon them. He was not yet in them. And we'll get to that verse in a minute. It was to teach and to show that Jesus would delegate his authority to those that he would send in his name. Now, boy, if you make notes or listen. His authority upon them had the same weight as his own authority himself. Did you hear that? The Holy Spirit made no distinction. In other words, okay, Jesus would heal somebody by the power of the Holy Spirit. He would say something, be thou cleansed, be thou healed. And the Holy Spirit is the one that would manifest that. If Jesus sent a disciple out to do the exact same thing, when the disciple said, be thou cleansed, be thou healed, the Holy Spirit didn't partially do it for them. He manifested the exact same level of power that he did with when Jesus said it himself. Why? Because it is his authority. It is 
as though Jesus spoke himself. Does this give you any previews about speak the word only? Are you remembering about the centurion who had the mindset, when I speak, it is done. Getting previews, remembering, thinking, okay. Read that sentence again. His authority, Jesus' authority upon them, had the same weight as his own authority himself. The Holy Spirit, did make, he did not make a distinction between the Lord and his anointed serv servants. But we live in even a better time than they. Now Jesus told them several things about the Holy Spirit. Now, John 14, look at verse 16. Now Jesus, here again, he's about to leave the planet and ascend and be with the Father. And he says, I will pray, oh, verses 16 and 17, I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, well, if you underline, that he may abide with you forever. Say out loud, forever. forever. Say this, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is, stuck with me. is stuck with me. He, for, he is stuck with me forever. Jesus was on earth three and a half years in his ministry, but the Holy Ghost, he stuck with me forever. I almost feel like praying for the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Think of what he has to put up with. Oh, anyway. Verse 17, even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him. Now, isn't this interesting? Because he says, now talking to the, his disciples, but you know him. For years, I didn't know what he meant by that. You know him. How do you know him? For he dwelleth with you. How did they know that? Oh, oh, they had seen him work. When they went forth in the name, they knew it wasn't them healing the sick. They knew him. They knew what it was like to have the Holy Spirit, quote, with you. Because they would speak in the name of Jesus and the person would get healed or the devil would come out. Well, they can't see the Holy Ghost. But they, like, like, like Jesus said, you may not be able to see the wind. But you can sure see the effects of the wind. Amen. Isn't that right? Well, they couldn't see the Holy Ghost. But they could sure see the effects of the Holy Ghost. So they knew him in that sense. They knew what it was like to co-labor with the Holy Spirit and see the results. But now Jesus adds something. You know him, for he dwelleth with you, yeah, and shall be in you. I just wonder what those guys thought. These are natural men, not born again. We read it with such an understanding of the New Testament and, and the, the new birth. I wonder what it meant to Peter. God, the Holy Spirit... It's going to be in me? How in the world? Anyway, got to go on. They had co-labored with the Holy Spirit before when Jesus had sent them out to heal the sick. They knew him in that way. They knew the Holy Spirit in that way. They had co-labored with the Holy Spirit as he worked with them. But soon he will be in them. And notice he will be in them forever. Not coming and going like the Old Testament saints. Not coming on the prophet or coming on the king or coming on the priest for a mission. But abiding forever within. Say this with me. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. on the authority of the word of God. I know that you are in me. And that you abide in me. And you will abide in me. Forever. forever you need to get established in that truth now you're close go over to chapter 16 of John and look at verse 7 now he's talking talking to the 12 I used to be so jealous of the 12 I'll just be honest with you I used to be so jealous this is not fair Peter, James, and John, they got to walk with you. They got to see you do the stuff, man. <laughs> they got to ask you questions. I mean, you know, they got to feel your hand upon their head. I, they watched you do all these miracles. 
I got a book. I was so, you know, I got a book in the early days. Now I go, I got a book. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> everything has changed. But in the early days, I said, this is just not fair, you know. So he got me out of that, you know, real quick. He says, let's see now. Let's see. You're complaining like about Peter. But he said, do you ever notice that Paul came to know me better than Peter? Who corrected who? Who was it had to correct who? Paul wound up having to correct Peter. And he says, you have the same teacher that the apostle Paul had. Plus, you have all the writings of the apostle Paul. So you're complaining that you can't know me as well as Peter. Yet by my word and by my spirit, it's up to you. You can come to the place where you know me better than any of the twelve. My, uh, my murmuring ceased. <laughs> I began to meditate the word, pray in other tongues, just like Pastor Dave said. Amen. Now, look at John 16, verse 7. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is expedient for you that I go away. Now, in plain English, the word expedient just simply means better. It's better for you. I, I have meditated this. I'm trying to put myself in the place of the 12. They left everything to follow Jesus, and I know they're glad they did. Man, the things they have seen. Peter has walked on the water. Come on. They multiplied the bread, and after Jesus blessed it, bread would multiply in the disciples' hands. It didn't multiply in Jesus' hands. It multiplied. They'd, can you imagine you're holding the, you know, I'm not, the, I'm not really the sharpest knife in the door, but I think even I would get it. He provides. <laughs> he provides. I'm breaking the bread, and it never gets any smaller. <laughs> and I'm giving it out to thousands, and I'm going, I, I think he provides, okay? I think I would get that. <laughs> You know, <laughs> good lesson, isn't it? <laughs> the things they have seen, and they wanted it to go on forever. But he says, I'm leaving. And they're going, what? Then he says, oh, and by the way, it's better for you that I'm leaving. And they're going, what? <laughs> How could it be better? And he tells them, for if I go not away, the comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart... I will send him unto you. Now see, we know because we've had the privilege of hearing the rest of the New Testament. They didn't know what was coming. They didn't know the new birth really was coming. They didn't really understand about the baptism in the Holy Spirit, I don't think. But Jesus, at this point, is the only human on planet Earth. You know, he is called the seed. He is the only... It's like God packaged life in human flesh... That's Jesus. Could I say the seed of life? But he's the only one at this moment on planet earth. He's the only one that the Holy Spirit is not only upon, but the Holy Spirit is in. You got that permanently. He could continue his ministry. I mean, God could have set it up that way. Pastor Dave, I, I, when I was first meditating this 20 some odd years ago, I said, Dave, how could he say it's better? Because at that time I had an aunt who was dying of brain cancer. I was going, how could he say it's better? I know if Jesus was here, my aunt would be healed. I mean, you know, I could, I, there wasn't any place I could take her at that moment, not even here, and really trust that she'd probably be healed, you know. But I know if Jesus was here. But then Dave, he taught on it after that. Thank God for our pastor. He said, well, listen, what Jesus was saying, look, if he'd have stayed here, if he was still here today and he had an office in Jerusalem, Jesus corporate, I don't know, international, you know, there's this one, there's him, just one. And he said, but the whole earth knows that if they can get their sick ones there, so it's basically take a number. Now your number might be 9,247,385. It might take you six months to a year to two years, maybe to finally be able to come with your Aunt Betty. Now you do know that if you could get her there, she didn't die before you got her there. <laughs> You do know she would get it. But see, that's not God's plan. To have one seed on planet Earth 
and all of humanity have to go to that one geographical place so that one seed could minister. Jesus was already teaching that wasn't, because he would multiply himself in the 12, if you'll allow me, by placing his mantle upon him. He would multiply his ministry with the 70 by placing his mantle upon him. He was trying to teach already. But then in my face-to-face -face one time, now this is an excerpt. I'm just going to read you a short excerpt from one of the face-to-face -face documents. This is the one titled, The Works of the Father. The Holy Spirit said this to me. Consider this, says the Spirit of Grace. Have you ever seen any plant that grew from a seed where all of, that, where all of the parts of that plant collaborate together to form only one seed in the pattern of the original? In other words, you plant a seed, you nurture it, you fertilize it, you keep pests away from it, and finally that thing comes to maturity, and when it comes to harvest, there's just one seed? <laughs> you could have just kept the first one. <laughs> Isn't that right? He says, have you ever seen a seed like that? He said, no, and you never will. The Father's plan is for one seed to produce many seeds, every seed being complete and full, and every seed being in the exact likeness of the original seed that was planted. This is the will of the Father, this is the plan of the Father. This is the mind of Christ when he chose of his own accord to be that seed which was planted. He died in order to be glorified that his life be multiplied through the earth. Hello, harvest. Hello, seeds in the same image. Hello, seeds able to do what the original did. You see it in nature everywhere. He taught this gospel everywhere. You don't find any seed producing one seed. You know, they, I, I know you've probably heard this, but in the excavations in Egypt where they would bury the pharaohs, entomb them, they would put all this gold and silver and all these things, everything they thought they might need in the afterlife, and they would put these sealed uh, bottles, urns, of seed in there and they found some that had never the seal had never been broken it had been stored there for 3,000 years roughly and the question arose would they still produce they planted them and you know what they produced the very same you are the seed from the seed <laughs> you are the seed complete becoming complete and full, every seed being in the exact likeness. You remember, does that remind you of a verse? As we behold the glory of the Lord, as in a glass, we are changed into that same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the Lord. Huh? I hope I'm getting every one of Alan's verses. Anyway. <laughs> every seed being able to produce exactly like the first one. Hmm. So expedient means better. He, what he, they didn't know it, but he was telling them, if I don't go, you'll never be reborn in my image. If I don't go, the Holy Spirit will never live in you the same way he lives in me. It is better for you, and I'll say this, it's better, it was better for them. It's better for us. It's also better for the kingdom of God. And it's better for the world Amen. that he left if the seeds come to full maturity. Amen. <laughs> okay, go to Acts chapter 1. Y'all having a good time? You guys are hungry people. Been to church all week. Still come to church. What's wrong with you people? You act like you're contending for revival or something. We are. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 1. Let's, let's go to verses 4 and 5. Of course, Jesus has appeared to them. And being assembled together with them, commanded. This is Jesus commanding them that they should not depart from Jerusalem 
but wait for the promise of the Father. Which saith he, ye have heard of me. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Now come on down to verse 8. And you sh- but you shall receive power. And this is the word dunamis. You shall receive power after that the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria unto the uttermost parts of the earth. All right, now let's just take that one sentence. You shall receive power. Can Jesus lie? No. So everyone he was talking to right there, you shall receive power. Now we know from another account that Jesus appeared to over 500 people after he rose from the dead. I don't know how many of those 500 was standing right there, but I know it was more than the 12. I know it was more than the 70. Because how many were in the upper room? 120. When it says they were all in one place in one accord, those 120 were all obeying what Jesus said to do. He said, wait. I don't know where the rest of the 500 are. I don't know that for sure that he said the same thing to all 500. I know he appeared to 500. But I do know that there were 120. And I can still, I can still add. 12 does not equal 120. 12 plus 70 equals 82. So I know here that we have 38 no names. Well, we know a few of them. Mary is one of them, the mother of Jesus. But we have 38 people that we have no record that they were ever commissioned before. There are no names for the most part. We, ha- we know about the 12. We know about the 70, but that's only 82. Now we've got 38 more. But now notice. Did only 82 out of the 120 receive the Holy Ghost? Does not your Bible say they all... In fact, I wrote, I've got the verse here. Uh, no, I don't. That they all spoke with power. <laughs> that the whole, here, let's go to Acts chapter 2. We'll just read it. I don't want to take a chance on misquoting it. Acts chapter 2. You know there was 120 in the upper room. Verse 1, when the day of Pentecost was fully, fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now, that doesn't mean that they were, everybody liked strawberry ice cream. Although Dave says if it's not strawberry, it's not ice cream. But that doesn't mean they were all in one accord regarding ice cream or anything else. They were in one accord by obeying what Jesus told them to do. Out of the 500, there's only 120. But these 120, bless God, we're not leaving. He said, don't leave. We're not leaving. He said, wait until we get the promise of the Father. We're going to wait until we get the promise of the Father. They were in one accord. They they were on a mission from God. They were on assignment from the head of the church. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. And sat upon each of them. And 82 of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. That's the verse I was after. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what did Jesus say? You shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. All 120 of them. What does that tell us? It's not just for the 12. It's not just for the 70. In Mark chapter 16, he told the 12... You go and preach this gospel everywhere to every creature. Those that believe shall speak with new tongues. They shall cast out devils. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Will you get the Holy Ghost? Honey, you got the power. You got the same power on the inside of you. And again, I'm reminded, I see that picture again. There's a certain evangelist I was listening to. I don't listen to many, but I was listening to this one. And he has a four-year-old daughter that's been, he's been training up. And she goes with, she watches him pray for the sick and see, see uh, get results. And he's been training her to do the same. And she's getting the results. 
and they were waiting in line at Disney World in Orlando. Have y'all ever been in one of those lines in Disney World? I have. I mean, you can stand in that hot sun down there for two hours waiting on a 15-minute ride, you know. And uh, they have these rails on each side to kind of keep you corralled, you know. And he said, man, that line extended. We were going to be there a long time. But my daughter noticed a lady in a wheelchair way up in front of us. But it's crowded. This, you know, we're just people all the way in, these, in between these rails. But my little daughter way up there, she noticed a lady in a wheelchair. And she started tugging on my shirt. I said, Daddy, pointing. I said, Honey, I see her, but I, I can't get to her. And the little four-year-old girl said, I can. <laughs> and she started weaving in and out. He was watching her weaving up through that crowd, headed towards that lady in that wheelchair, and it dawned on him. The same Holy Ghost that works with his daughter is the same Holy Ghost that anointed Jesus of Nazareth. We have got to understand, it is that same Holy Ghost that lives in your belly. Same Holy Ghost is with you. Same Holy Ghost is upon you. And you have been given that name. He says, Father... I am sending them the same way you sent me. Well, what did Jesus do? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And if he's sending you on the same mission, it'll be written of you. You know? And he said, man, that line extended. We were going to be there a long time. But my daughter noticed a lady in a wheelchair way up in front of us. But it's crowded. This, you know, we're just people all the way in, these, in between these rails. But my little daughter way up there, she noticed a lady in a wheelchair. And she started tugging on my shirt. I said, Daddy, pointing. I said, Honey, I see her, but I, I can't get to her. And the little four-year-old girl said, I can. <laughs> and she started weaving in and out. He was watching her weaving up through that crowd, headed towards that lady in that wheelchair, and it dawned on him. The same Holy Ghost that works with his daughter is the same Holy Ghost that anointed Jesus of Nazareth. We have got to understand, it is that same Holy Ghost that lives in your belly. Same Holy Ghost is with you. Same Holy Ghost is upon you. And you have been given that name. He says, Father... I am sending them the same way you sent me. Well, what did Jesus do? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And if he's sending you on the same mission, it'll be written of you. God anointed those of the prayer center, those who hear this message. Really, it's all who believe. With the Holy Ghost and with power. Who went about doing good in their century. Healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with them. We're on the same mission. Set the, to seek and to save that which is lost. And to heal all that are oppressed of the devil. To set the captive free. To open the eyes of the blind. Everything that Jesus said. He said, Father, I'm sending them the same way you sent me. Hmm. You shall receive power. Well, how many people were in the upper room? Answers, 120. It's the original 11 plus Judas's replacement. So that makes 12. And if you add the 70 names who had been commissioned, that makes 82. But 120 minus 82 equals 38. No names. We know a few. We know Mary, the mother of Jesus, was there and maybe a couple of others. But did not they receive the same Holy Spirit as the 12? And as the 70, did they not receive the same power? The promise is to all who believe, he said in Mark 16. The difference this time is that they will not only have the Holy Spirit with them. From this point on, they have the Holy Spirit within them. And I mean forever. He will not come and go for specific assignments like he did with the Old Testament. And like he did with the 12 and then the 70. See, with us, he's not only with us. He is in us. You are the temple of God. Where you go, God goes. When you enter the room, darkness flees. 
I believe it will come to the point that when you wake up in the morning, the devils in your geographical region will tremble. Oh my goodness, the Christians are awake again. What damage are they going to do to the kingdom of darkness today? How many captives are they going to set free today? How many blind eyes will be opened? How many Muslims will receive Jesus today? How many atheists will be born again? Mm. Good stuff. Mm. Now the one thing we have to remember in all this, the purpose, Jesus said all of that, and you shall be my witnesses. This is not to build your kingdom. Never get prideful. It's not you doing the works anyway. It's not by your power. It's not by your holiness. It is all that name and faith in that name and obedience to the voice of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? That word where it says, Witnesses, you shall be witnesses unto me. Acts 1.8. I want you to see it. Look at it in your Bible. You shall receive power, dunamis, after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses, witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, Judea, and all Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. The purpose of the power is to empower your witness. Amen. It's to validate what you say. Now, it is compassion. He does just flat love people, but don't think you're just going to heal them and not tell them who did it. Simon the sorcerer wanted power because he wanted a name for himself. He hadn't yet submitted. He, did, he wasn't really yet in line. That's why Peter said, you have no part in this yet. He wasn't really sold out to Jesus. He was wanting to build something in him become a name. A lot of you know, being nice today. That word witness in the Strong's is G3144. And it's M A R T. U.S. It is the root word for martyr. That doesn't always mean that you're going to wind up being martyred. Okay? But just so you'll know how serious this word is, that same word, G3144, you don't have to turn there, but it's in Acts 2220. Paul is speaking, and he says, And when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed. We all know what happened with Stephen. Stoned to death. Paul said, and when the blood of thy martyr Stephen was shed, I also was standing by and consenting unto his death and kept the raiment of them that slew him. That word that in the King James is translated martyr, we know, we understand that. That is the same word, M-A-R-T-U-S. It doesn't mean that every single one of us is going to wind up being literally martyred in the sense of losing your life. But I tell you what it does mean. Every time... That you share Jesus with somebody. Every time you dare like that little girl to go forward. Can I pray with you? Every time you want to end the name of Jesus. See, the purpose of the power is the witness of Jesus. And every time you share the gospel, every time you share the name, you open yourself up to rejection. Possibility of rejection, ridicule, and more and more, even in America, persecution. Isolation. It may come to the point of incarceration. Okay? So every time you do it, it is a form of laying down your life for the gospel and for the master. You are loving, every time you do it, you are loving the gospel more than you love your own life. So understand the purpose of the power. You shall be witnesses unto me amen? amen so say it with me I am the agent of authority because he has given me his name the Holy Spirit is the agent of power but I have been baptized with the Holy Ghost I have the Holy Spirit not just with me but with me everywhere I go I am a witness. I am a martyr. I speak the name of Jesus. And I speak this gospel everywhere I go. And I am a person under authority. 
Therefore the Lord has given me authority. And when I speak, it is done. In Jesus' name.